Therefore, time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray on South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What an honour to share with this House that just this weekend, I and my colleague Lisa Thompson from here on Bruce were privileged to present the local recipients of the Ontario Volunteer Service Awards. Right. 289 people across Bruce Gray on Sound and here on Bruce were thanked this past Sunday for their great contribution to community life. Our constituents are among some 5 million Ontarians who give generously their time and talents to multiple local causes in an effort to make Bruce Gray, Owen Sound, and Huron Bruce a better place to live for all. They deserve our recognition and heartfelt thanks. It was always a privilege to recognize outstanding constituents who serve our region by dedicating time to volunteering with, for example, Home and Community Support Services Gray Bruce, Grace, the Georgian Riding Association for Challenged Equestrians, the Alzheimer's Society of Gray Bruce, the Neustadt Normandy Carrick Agricultural Society, Victim Services, Bruce Gray Perth, Salt Beach Lions Club, Victorian Order of Norse's Gray Bruce, just to name a few. I always do my best to be on hand for volunteer words because I know, Mr. Speaker, in my riding's case, this precious sector is made up of many, many of our proud seniors and other people that give every day. It is also a personal connection for me because public service has always played a key role in my life. Whether it's volunteering for Heart and Stroke or serving at the Bruce Peninsula Health Services Foundation when we raised $3 million for the Lions Head Hospital and Wyarton Hospital, or volunteering as a coach of a sports team or manager of a festival, to me, it's always about the people. I have the immense respect for all those who use their life to make a positive difference in their communities and the lives of others. I want to close with one final comment. I read somewhere that in the last 10 years, more than 250,000 Ontario youth volunteers have contributed more than 1.2 million volunteer hours. This is an amazing point, and I'm very pleased to see our youth engaged in fostering a sense of community responsibility. People across Ontario have a reason to be grateful for the efforts of our volunteers, both young and old, who are making effort every day to build better communities everywhere. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to them. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Essex. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Well, uh, I'm sure it came as a welcome uh, surprise to walk outside yesterday in uh, this city and across uh, Ontario to feel some, uh, some warmth finally in the province of Ontario. Yes, Speaker, indeed, spring is finally upon us, and that means that uh, there are thousands of farmers and farm families across rural Ontario who are gearing up for the spring planting season. If you go on uh, Twitter and you follow the hashtag plant18 or hashtag Ontario or ONT Ag, you can follow some of our uh, province's farmers almost in real time, Speaker. They are teaching us about the challenges of agricultural production and the wonderment of uh, the bounty of this province in every corner. Uh, we are so grateful for their endeavours and what they do, not only to provide food for our communities, but also to provide a massive uh, infusion of economic uh, stimulus. So we want to wish them all the all the best uh, in the spring planting season. Speaker, winter wheat is starting to sprout. If you drive around rural areas, I just want to give them a shout out. Also, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to attend the Essex County Federation of Agriculture Hall of Fame induction, uh, where uh, we in inducted Charles Demare and Terence H. Wright. These are two gentlemen that have spent their entire lives promoting and working in our Ontario agriculture sector. They are uh, gentlemen. They have wonderful families, and they. Among among many others across the province, have contributed to our uh, welfare, to our benefit, and we want to thank them and wish everyone planting uh, in the spring here a wonderful spring planting season. Thank you so much. Thank you. For the member, Stephen, the member from Scarborough Legion Court. The Speaker, I rise today to recognize the 103rd anniversary of Armenian Genocide. 103 years ago today, troops from the Ottoman Empire massacred and forcibly removed Armenians from their homes in Armenia and Anatolia. Through this bloodshed, innocent people were violently displaced from the communities, and many were subject to torture, abuse, and starvation. In all, it is estimated 1.5 million Armenians were massacred during the genocide. In commemoration this past Sunday, I attended the annual Armenian Genocide Commemoration event hosted by the Armenian National Committee of Toronto. This event was not only allows the community to grieve tragically that struck the Armenian people between 1915 and 1923, but also enabled Ontarians to reflect on and celebrate the contributions of the Armenian Canadian community in Ontario today. Despite this great tragedy, Mr. Speaker, the Armenian people remain resilient, and many managed to escape to find homes across Canada and in this province and in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Armenian Canadian community for reminding us of the importance of recognizing tragedies that occurred in the past so that we can prevent them in the future. I also want to extend sincere condolences to those who lost their loved ones during the Armenian Genocide. Your community is in our thought today here at Queen's Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This uh, past weekend, I had the pleasure of meeting with some amazing people who are very passionate about, about saving our Muskoka hospitals. As you may have noticed, I've been reading petitions calling on the Minister of Health to maintain two hospitals in Muskoka, one in Bracebridge and one in Huntsville. The petition also calls upon the minister to ensure small and medium-sized hospitals receive en enough funding to maintain core services. The future of these hospitals has been a long-standing issue, but recently the Skoka Algonquin Health Care Health Ca Capital Development Task Force announced they will soon be making a recommendation. With that on the horizon, my constituents asked me to launch another petition to ensure their concerns were heard. But a petition doesn't do any good without signatures, so I want to thank some of the dedicated people who have been distributing and collecting these petitions. Noreen Sinclair, who collected 338 signatures in four hours at the food land in Sundridge. Ru Ruby Truax, who sent in sheets with 324 signatures. And then there are people I met this weekend, Marcia Mackesy, who has been distributing pet petitions up and down the main street of Huntsville, Marjorie Goodwin, who collected 468 signatures, June Tubby, who collected 505 signatures, Karen Wright, who presented me with 526 signatures, and finally, Tammy McCaughey and Peter Sangoy of Sprucedale, who collected some 1,500 signatures that I will be presenting today, and there are more. Thank you to everyone who has sent in petitions and to all the business owners and municipalities who are displaying the petitions in their shops and offices. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. For the member, stand as a member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I stand here in solidarity with 2,300 sisters and brothers of Unifor Local 444. Some of them are here with us today at Queen's Park. They've been on the picket line at the government-owned Caesars Windsor Casino for nearly three weeks. I raised this issue here two weeks ago. I'm raising it again today because management at Caesars isn't taking bargaining seriously. These workers are on the front line, doing the work that that makes the hundreds of millions of dollars in revenues the casino brings in possible. The average pay is just above minimum wage. These workers deserve to be treated fairly. While on strike, these workers continue to give back to our community by collecting items for our food banks. There was a rally at the casino Sunday, which was attended by nearly 2,000 participants, including myself and my NDP colleagues. These workers have community support. Now, they need support from their employer, from this Liberal government. This labour dispute began the first week of April. Just three days into the strike, management cancelled all shows, reservations and promotions for the entire month. It takes both sides to bargain, and while it seems that casino management isn't interested in resolving this issue, the OLG, the Premier, can direct management to get back to bargaining and negotiate a fair agreement. This labour dispute affects casino workers, local businesses and our municipality. Other workers are being laid off, and the estimated community revenue loss is multi-millions of dollars and climbing. It's time for casino workers to benefit from their hard work and the success of the casino. It's time for the Premier to direct management to get back to the bargaining table and stay there until an agreement is reached. So the member, the member from London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. And Speaker, as I approach the end of my time as MPP for London North Centre, I rise to acknowledge some incredible organizations in London who've inspired me with their deep commitment to understanding the needs of people in my community and who work tirelessly to make a positive impact in their lives. For 142 years, the amazing team at Marymount has been supporting children and families going through tough times with tremendous programs delivered with loving care. For over 60 years, the great folks at Boys and Girls Club of London have been there when school's out, offering a safe, welcoming place for kids to learn, have fun, and build positive relationships. For over 30 years, the wonderful staff and volunteers at Participation House have been encouraging and supporting people with disabilities to reach their full potential in the community. Since 1971, Big Brothers Big Sisters London and area have been connecting kids with mentors who remind the littles that they can be anything they dream of when they grow up. All of these organizations, or organizations and so many more, I cannot mention in my meager 90 seconds here, Speaker, um, have, have touched so many lives, including mine. And I want to say thank you to every one of them for the great work that they do.
Thank you. Further member statements, the member from York Simcoe. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, it is my pleasure to rise today to celebrate a historic landmark in my riding, the Sharon Temple. I was delighted to learn that uh, artifacts uh, from the temple demonstrating its significance are being displayed right here in a display in the halls of the Legislative Assembly. The Sharon Temple is a beautiful historic building located in the village of Sharon, just north of Newmarket. Designated as a National Historic Site of Canada, it is home to over 6,000 artifacts. It was constructed between 1825 and 1832 by the Children of Peace, a Quaker community. The Sharon Temple is a beautiful gem of architecture, and architectural students from around the world uh, come and look at it and measure it and examine it, and it's uh, really a thrill to be able to have it here in the legislature. I would like encourage all of my colleagues here and the guests to take a moment to stop by at the display, and if you see what you like, come and visit the Sharon Temple in East Gwillimbury. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to uh, make a comment about uh, the slaughter that occurred on uh, Young Street uh, yesterday. You know, there are some people that uh, are starting to say, well, uh, how awful things are and evil is taking over. But I just want to be very clear in stating what the majority of people think, whether they're in Toronto or anywhere in Ontario or Canada, is that the vast majority of Torontonians or Ontarians or Canadians are amazingly compassionate, good, accepting people that aren't going to let this one person destroy all the good that is in our province and in our country. They're saying, no, we're not going to let this happen. I mean, Young Street runs right through the heart of the province. I think it goes all the way up to James Bay. It represents all of us, the heart, and we're not going to let people stand by and say, well, it's no longer Toronto the good, and it's no longer the good Canada. Well, they're wrong. This is an amazingly wonderful place with people of all walks of life who support each other, help each other, volunteer for each other, and it still is Toronto the good, it still is Canada the good, and we're not going to let this vile episode bring us down one inch, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, speaker, too often uh, people make the mistake of uh, assuming youth homelessness is an urban issue. Tomorrow in Prescott, Connect Youth is launching an awareness campaign to show that no community is immune. Organizers will display 92 purple ribbons at South Grenville District High School. The ribbons represent the number of young people who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless referred to Connect Youth from across Leeds Grenville last year. It's actually quite an eye-opening number for a small urban and rural community. And it shows why we're so blessed to have Connect Youth working so closely with these vulnerable youth. They know what's happening in young people's lives. And they saw youth homelessness as a growing concern, and they've decided to work with partners like the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville to respond. As a result, they temporarily provided transitional housing to 54 of those youth referred to them. That's 54 youth, at-risk youth, who in a moment of crisis found what we sometimes take for granted, a safe place to live. Being there, at, being there at a precious moment a young person needs them is what Connect Youth has been working on since it was founded in 2001 in response to a tragic suicide. It's no overstatement to say that they are saving lives. Unfortunately, tomorrow uh, my duties at Queen's Park will prevent me from being at uh, their youth homelessness event, but I want everybody to know that who is connected with Connect Youth how 100% I support what they're doing and how I thank them for making a difference in Leeds Grenville. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's their